So, as we know, the month of May is Asian American Pacific Island or Heritage Month. A-A-P-I-H-M? Some of my favorite like Asian American owned brands that I just like have been loving lately or you know a few like up and coming Asian and Asian American like music acts and then maybe some you know favorite Asian Asian American TV shows all right so let's get right into it so one of my favorite favorite Asian American owned companies is this company called Low and Sons. They do like luxury backpacks and bags. And I actually own like three or four things from them. <laughs> like my favorite backpack that I always travel with is Low and Sons backpack. It's the Rollage. It is such a chic looking backpack and it looks so good everywhere. It's totally something you can like bring to school, something you can use for traveling. Like, it's a very like sleek looking backpack. The best part is it's so functional while it looks so great. I am a girl that needs function over style. It is a little pricey, but it's kind of worth the investment. Plus I just like love backpacks. It's not like a weird thing. I'm always looking at like new backpacks, like every like year or two. And I'm like, bitch, snap out of it. You don't need another backpack. I have the Pearl. I have that in like a nice pinky color. It's like pretty good travel bag because so it's like a crossbody it like zips and it has little clips at the top there's like a little key ring but it like holds a lot of stuff so yeah and so it's like named after helen lowe and her two sons helped her start this company and so now it's called lowe and sons and cannot recommend it enough they have a memorial day sale right now up to 40 percent off so go check it out and another brand that I just found out recently that was Asian founded, but I have been standing since day one is a freaking Girlfriend Collective, which I'm sure everyone has seen them all over Instagram, all over social media now, because they're just like, ooh, like cute, clean girl, like matching set. They first started, they did this kind of like online campaign where if you sign up for their mailing list so just give them your email address and you pay for shipping they will send you a free pair of leggings what i was like sign me up immediately when they actually like came in the mail and i was like pleasantly surprised how like how buttery soft they were they were like and they were made with like recycled materials like, and so yeah they have so many cute colors now i bought so many different like leggings and sets from girlfriend yeah so i've been really liking this peach and lily it was for like you know skincare makeup so it goes on it makes like a really nice base to work as like a primer and the CLE cosmetics CC cream just because it just like blends on and it kind of just feels like you're not wearing any makeup I'm just like ultimate lazy girl lazy makeup girl so I'm here for all of like you know anything that does most work for the least amount of effort I'm there for it and even to this day as I've been alive for close to 30 years I still don't know how to match my concealer shade which is something I still can't learn so I like using like BB and CC creams because it's a little bit more forgiving but another uh, Asian founded brand that I have been meaning to try out is the Tower 28 kind of like the lip jelly lip glosses um I've been seeing them all over Instagram and they look so like luscious and so cute but yeah I haven't gone around to trying them yet but they're probably next on my list for stuff to try but um yeah if you have tried it let me know if it's good and next let's talk about a couple um of like my favorite tv shows that I've watched lately kind of you know, starring like Asian, Asian American um, leads. Someone's been making a big push to have more like Asian American voices included, Asian American stories shown. Um, so I've kind of been feeling it. I've loved all these like new stuff that's coming out. There's still so much I haven't watched yet, but let's just run through like a couple that I have watched and you know, just loved. Yeah, so the new Bling Empire season two just came out and I 
am a sucker for a good trashy reality TV show. I won't lie, but I'm very selective on like what reality TV I really get into and then I get super obsessed with and I just like can't stop watching until I finish it. But Bling Empire is one of those just because it's like the right mix of like drama and funny is Never Have I Ever is seriously one of the funniest, most relatable shows I've seen on Netflix. Yeah, it kind of stars, you know, this young Indian American girl and yeah, basically her whole best friend group are just like extremely nerdy, really dorky, super smart and nerdy brown girls. And I was just like, I feel seen. Like this is like kind of me in high school. There's just like so many laugh out loud moments in Never Have I Ever. I think, you know, also in due part, it is like a Mindy Kaling project. <laughs> I recently had to convince my mom that I'm not forsaking my religion because I tweeted, Harry Styles is my god. Anyways, yeah, there's all these like one-liners. And then one of my favorite TV shows that I've seen in, in recent, recent years is Pen15 that just ended. Maya and Anna, who basically play like younger versions of themselves, but this is an extremely cringy show. However, I think it perfectly captures how cringy, awkward, painful, kind of that early adolescent time period in, you know, every single girl's life was. And the costuming on that show and just like from everything to, you know, the hairstyles to the braces, bowl cut, to the funny, it's just very painfully real. And then, you know, rounded out kind of like the last show that I kind of want to like recommend or talk about that I've really been enjoying lately is Takeout with Lisa Ling. It's on HBO Max. It's kind of like a, well, I don't necessarily want to call it like an Anthony Bourdain show. She kind of just takes like a city and like a, you know, like minority group that that city you know might not be particularly associated with or you know might have like a surprising history and she kind of like delves into it there's like a few really great notable episodes that she does about the japanese american kind of community that lived in boyle heights here in la but there is like still vestiges of the Japanese American kind of influence that was there and kind of how that was affected with you know the internment camps that happened during World War II and how you know kind of changed the landscape of like Boyle Heights and LA but yeah so this Lisa Link show has been like really great and I think the theme song was done by the Linda Linda so you know A plus all across the board <laughs> So a few notable like groups that I've been like listening to lately. There's an album by an artist called Luna Lee and the album is Duality. It's like this really great like kind of like indie bedroom pop like she is actually supporting Japanese breakfast tour. <laughs> yeah, so it's like really great. Kind of like dreamy bedroom pop music. Yeah, I'm really feeling this lately. Okay, another group that I've been listening to a lot is Lucid Express. The self titled album by Lucid Express, also called Lucid Express. <laughs> This is also like really great, like very like dreamy kind of shoegaze, but I like that it's a little bit more mm, almost like beach house maybe. Yeah, like they're a lot more um, melodic and like a lot more of the instrumentals is kind of like the main focus. Um, and I think this group is from, yeah, they're a five piece based out of Hong Kong. And yeah, they're just like, such a good group. I've been really feeling this album a lot lately. Then obviously an artist and probably in the past year I've been listening to so much is Audrey Nuna. A Liquid Breakfast was probably one of my favorite albums of 2021. But yeah, it's just like she's just 
had such a good year for production. Like her beats are just like crazy and you know. Yeah, it's kind of what she does with just like, you know, the production and her flow, like everything just works so well. And you know, just objectively, she's so cool. The South Korean group called Adoy, A-D-O-Y is how it's stylized. Yeah, they're just like a really great like indie electronica band from, from South Korea. Yeah, as you can tell, I really love, you know, dreamy bedroom pop kind of like indie, indie kind of sounds. But, you know, I love it. I always can use more of it. This art is called Kells, K-E-L-Z. Um, the album is called 5 a.m. and I can't sleep. Yeah, really like cute, very like synthy kind of dream pop. Um, yeah, she's this young, like, Vietnamese-American artist, you know, in Orange County, but really been feeling it. So, yeah, those are, you know, just, like, a couple young Asian, Asian-American artist groups that I've been listening to lately, really feeling, especially, you know, like, growing up, I was, like, loved indie, loved rock music, loved electronica music, um, but you know there wasn't always a ton of you know Asian faces in there. So it's so cool to see so many young super duper talented um, kind of musicians and artists kind of like coming up you know. And yeah, let me know who you've been listening to. Send me your song recommendations, send me your Spotify playlist, I'll listen to them. Um, but yeah otherwise that's about it. Yeah. Thanks guys.